We got a field of 11 for this year's Withers Stakes at Aqueduct. Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Vinny. I'm back with another uh, prep talk. Last weekend we did hit the uh, we hit the Southwest. We missed in the San Vicente, but one for two is not bad. So we got three prep races this weekend: uh, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Let's try to go two for three. Hey, we have a field of eleven signed on for the Grade Three Wither Stakes. This is another ten point prep. We are winding down with the ten point preps. So 10 points to the winner, 4 points for 2nd, 2 points for 3rd, and 1 point for 4th. And we will just jump right into this with this full field, which I'm actually surprised that we got a full field of 11 to run a mile and an eighth at Aqueduct in February. And the weather is not supposed to be fantastic, so count on, count on probably a, at least a little bit of moisture in the track. But... Number one is Constitutional Lawyer for going out for uh, Ray Handel. And coming off a maiden win, impressive maiden win at this distance, actually, uh, back in the beginning of January. Went gate the wire. I There is other speed in here, but does get the rail draw. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to say this isn't the most star-studded field, in my opinion. Uh, I I do think this one does look interesting, especially drawing the rail and the chance of moisture in the track. Pedigree screams that, that would love it off track. So if the track does have a bit of moisture in it and it is running wet, uh, Constitutional Lawyer will be on my tickets for that reason. Uh, the number two is Grantham for Mike Maker. And I'm not really sure what to think of this one. Uh Ran okay in his debut at Churchill last November. Then he sent them to Turfway, and he, he won. He won on the poly. Great. And now he's switching them back to dirt. He's got a lot more of a turf pedigree, in my opinion. A declaration of war out of an out of a arch dam. I don't know what to think of this one. He's, the three diamonds, farms, and maker are always, always a good combo, but... This one is one that I think I'm I'm probably going to pass on. He does have tactical speed, so it wouldn't shock me. Uh, he did run second in his debut behind Rocket Dog, who was very hyped Brad Cox horse, who fell flat earlier this year in a Derby prep. So in the he ran in the Gun Runner and just did no running uh, at fairgrounds. So I'm I'm going to steer clear of this one. Uh, I understand if you like him to use him because he does have tactical speed and distance should be no problem with this one. He should love the extra distance, but I, I think this is more of a turf horse and I think three diamonds and maker just seeing what they have here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one is in a turf stake later this year here, uh, possibly on the undercard of some of these other big prep days down the line. The number three is smart and up uh, ship. He's the park shipper. Uh, even though he did run second in the Jerome last time out uh, here at Aqueduct at one mile. And I like this one a little bit. He ran very well in the Jerome. He didn't. He started way back and he made his way up to get second. I don't see why against this field he can't do the same thing today. Uh, the, the pedigree's okay. He should get the distance. Uh, just a question on talent, but he's been working great. He fired a bullet in his last work, uh, going five furlongs. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that 21 to one price that uh, we got in the Jerome. So you're definitely going to be taking a hit with that, with the price, but the horse has been able to rate. He's been able to come from way back or just off the pace. So I think he's one to consider, uh, definitely a contender in this field. In my opinion, uh, the number four is gilded age for bill Mott. And this horse has run into some very good horses uh, looking at it. Uh, in his debut, he lost to Major General. He was a very hyped horse. Uh, then he lost to Rattle and Roll, who went on to win the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland uh, before getting hurt before the Breeders' Cup. 
Cup, even though the Breeders' Futurity has not come back strong so far. Rattle and Roll did win, so we'll see what he does when he comes back. Um, Giant Game, and he lost the Giant Game. Call me Midnight and Surfer Dude. Uh, Giant Game is running in the Holy Bull, which will be a separate video. Uh, Call Me Midnight was the upset winner of the LeCompte. So this this horse has run against some good fields. He is making his three-year-old debut for uh, for Mott. Pedigree is phenomenal. Medallia Doro out of Angela Renee, who was, a, uh, I believe, a grade one winner. Uh, someone might want to check me on that, but I'm pretty sure she was a grade one winner. Coming off the bench, Bill Ma, he's, uh, I don't know if this one's going to be 100% prime, but does get Kendrick, which is a very good sign, especially here at Aqueduct. Kendrick always does good here. So Gilded Age is one that, I don't know what kind of price we're going to get. I'm hoping around that four or five to one range, but definitely one with the connections and just the back class that I think is going to take a very big step forward today. The number five is. Corvisier, if I butchered that, sorry. He was the winner of the Jerome last time out. And this one is another one with a fantastic pedigree. Uh, tap it out of Take Charge Brandy. Amazing pedigree here. Uh, distance should be no problem. Handled the wet going at uh, during the Jerome with ease and won easily. The negative here is that Jose Ortiz jumps off. Um, I'm going to guess this is likely going to be your at least your morning line favorite. Maybe he won't be the post time favorite. But Jose Ortiz does jump off of this one, which is it's kind of concerning that he jumps off, especially when you look at the the ownership is big ownership. It's Hillendale. Um, the horse he jumps to is a Clarevich horse. Uh, so that makes it does make sense why he jumps off. But it's still concerning that. If he thought, I feel like if he thought this horse had it, he he would be riding it. So I, I don't know. I think at a short price, this is a favorite that maybe you try to beat. But if the track is wet, this horse is bred to run on a wet track all day. So I definitely keep your eye on the track condition on this one. But without Jose, I'm I'm more inclined to steer clear of using this one at a short price. The number six is Unbridled Bomber. Uh, he's okay. He ran fourth into Jerome. There's five runners coming out of the Jerome, which I, I'm not really, was not a huge fan of, but there's really not that much in here. Uh, he ran okay. He just sat, he just sat mid-pack and finished mid-pack. He did nothing spectacular, nothing awful. I don't know. He might be a price. He was double. He's been double digit odds in every star. I'm expecting that again today. Maybe a good one to use for exactas, trifectas, and superfectas if you're playing them. He did work a bullet last time. He's got an okay running style. He just kind of seems to be more of one paced. Uh, pedigree. Not really sure he's going to stretch out fantastically. He does. He is uh, sired by Upstart. So distance there isn't terrible. Uh, bottom pedigree is not not my favorite, but I don't know. I I would more have used this one as a bomb underneath for your your exotics than a serious win ticket. Uh, but trainer trainer jockey stats on the on on him are very good. I know those they're very hard to go by. Uh, just looking at the raw numbers, but uh. It's it's a good combo if you just take it for what it's worth, especially at a price. It could be worth just you know throwing a throwing a buck or two on, but I'm just going to use this one probably underneath underneath an exotics. The number seven is no need to worry, and he ships up. He's shipping up from Parks, uh, another Park shipper, and he doesn't look bad. Uh, he's probably going to get a little overlooked, but pedigree is solid. Uh, Sired by Algorithms. He was sired by Bernardini. Uh, he was bred by Claiborne Farms. Very, you know, very strong outlet for breeding. Uh, sold for double the stud fee, which is always good to see. Uh, he is owned own in trade by Harold Wiley. Shipping him in here. 
I don't think he'd ship him if he didn't think he had a shot. Um, he's going to be a price. He's been a price in all his last two races. He's won, and he's won at almost 20 to 1 and almost 15 to 1. So he's going to be a price. Uh, he should like a, a, bit, a bit of moisture in the track, honestly, with the, with the Bernardini pedigree. I think he's a dark horse in here. Uh, I'm I'm going to use him on tickets just because I'm not a fan of what stayed here out of the Jerome. And his numbers definitely look weaker compared to the rest of the field, but it's because of where he's running. You, if I, I feel like you're not going to see monster buyers coming out of parks, especially in non-stakes races. So yeah, he gets a 58 for breaking his maiden, and then he runs a 60. He runs a 66 buyer. Next time out in a uh, and then the la- in a 40 40k optional claimer non winners of two. Uh, he does lose the Lasix today, which is an, a bit of a negative. But he has he did win without Lasix. He drops a little weight today. He's only carrying 118. He was carrying 121 when he when he won that race. I don't think the distance should be a problem. If he's above 10 to one, I, I think he's a mu- I think this horse is a must use against the field like this. Uh, this this field, in my opinion, screams out for a price to come in, and I think this is a very live price. Uh, the number seven, no need to worry. Uh, the number eight is Un Ojo uh, for Anthony Dutro. He looks okay. Uh, I liked him a lot in the Stallion Series race back in December, and he kind of let me down. He let me down there. He just missed. Uh, I, I like another one where I really like the pedigree, but I'm not sure there's there's much here. Uh, maybe the wet track elevates this one based on the pedigree with uh, Lau, Lau Ban out of an AP and D dam. Should really like a wet uh, bit of moisture in the uh, in the surface. If we get a price on it, which I think we will, I'll use. But I don't know how much better of a trip honestly this horse could have gotten last time out at seven and just failed to get it done the added distance like i said should help just a just a very tough one i think to trust especially with a race over the track that wasn't fan it wasn't bad but it, it i don't know how much more was there um but another horse at a price that i think is definitely definitely playable um, if he gets bet down, I would say steer clear. Steer clear. Uh, Anthony Dutro is not known for stretch for going from sprints to routes. Uh, kind of stepping up. He doesn't run too many horses in these kind of graded stakes. So it's a very small sample size. Usually he he doesn't get these type of horses, but we'll see what he we'll see what he has here. Uh, anything over, I would say like twelve to one. He's worth using. The number nine is early voting for Chad Brown and Claire owned by Clarevich. And this one's probably going to be probably second or third choice in the morning line. Won't be shocked if this one goes off the favorite for Chad. His debut was okay. Uh, He broke from the wide post and he, he kind of just, he stalked the pace, took over and never looked, didn't look back. He didn't finish in my opinion, all that well, but it was his first time out. He's got a very good pedigree, another gun runner, sired horse who is just seeing every everywhere they seem to be running well. Uh, out of a Tisnow dam, so should like a little uh, moisture in the track. Debuted at a mile and ran very well. I I have a hard time trusting Chad on the dirt, on the on the dirt in general. So this is one at a short price. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to beat. Uh, he has, he's run he's had horses run well in the withers in the past, uh, but I I don't really trust him on the dirt. So I'm not going to use this one, but I have a feeling a lot of people will. It is the horse that Jose Ortiz jumps on. He was on him for his debut. I I see all the positives here. I just have a hard time trusting Chad on the dirt and. I I wasn't overly impressed with this debut, so I'm gonna steer clear. But again, I'm expecting this horse to prob at least be second choice at like no worse than second choice in my opinion. The number ten is Mr. Jefferson, uh, for Michael Trombetta, and I think they just kind of I think 
they just kind of want a derby horse here and they're they're trying all avenues he hasn't looked good in his last few uh he turf dirt turf dirt he looked okay he looked okay break uh winning the allowance race the allowance optional claimer at laurel going a mile and a 16th but he looked bad in the remsen and he looked even worse in the jerome in my opinion i uh, i don't see it i don't see it uh he has a pedigree he should have taken to the wet track last time and he didn't he really didn't know he really didn't know running uh i'm i'm steering completely clear of this one this one is an absolute toss for me um it, trombetta when trombetta wins i don't usually win but this this one i think is a safe toss he just he just hasn't looked good uh, i think he's going to need a vast turnaround in form to win here um and i just nothing that he's even his recent workouts i don't see it so i'm going to toss the number 10 mr jefferson the number 11 is cook creek and i like him a bit here he's got a very good pedigree and he's never run a bad race you know, we won his first two, two races at Delaware. He ran second in the uh, in the Nashua behind Rock uh, Rockefeller, and then he just finished third in the Jerome. Uh, he he got out kicked going home, but he ran he ran good. Uh, I I think he's he's another good one to use here. Uh, he drops a little weight. He was carrying 123 last time. He only he's only carrying 120 today. Uh, he did go off the favorite, so I, I mean, I'm going to expect him to be probably around that three, four to one price range. But I think he looks good. He doesn't, he doesn't seem like a horse that trains particularly well. Uh, with times, he's not overly impressive in the mornings. But he's been running okay, and he hasn't run a bad race yet. Pedigree says he should be able to stretch out. I don't see why he doesn't, he doesn't fit here. So I'm definitely gonna use I'm definitely gonna use him on some tickets. Uh, he's not gonna be my top pick, but I am going to use him. So with all that said, I'm going to end up landing on the number four Gilded Age for Bill Ma as my top pick. I just think there's more here. They should really enjoy the stretch out. He gets Kendrick Carmouche. I'm going on the assumption that the that the Jerome was not the strongest of prep races. So I'm going to hope that those horses that are getting bet out of the Jerome are not that good. And I'm going to hope I can beat the I'm going to hope I can beat the Chad Brown horse home. And I'm going to use him with the uh, with the number three smarten up. I think those are the I think those are the two. They both should be decent prices. And if we're right, well, uh, that the exacta should pay pay pretty good. So I will be back. Uh, I'll be back later this week with the Holy Bull and then the Robert B. Lewis previews. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. <laughs>